My name is Pastor Frank Sergio. I pastor Family Worship Center here in Rocky Fork, Colorado. We welcome our viewers, people from California, Mexico, just all over the United States. And uh, thank God for this modern technology that we're able to reach a lot of people and spread the gospel. And I believe a lot of churches are doing what we're doing. And so we're reaching millions and millions of Christians every Sunday. And I thank you for that. Amen. Let's all stand up and let's worship the Lord today. Good morning. Good morning. Y'all look great. Thank you. I feel a little offside today. There's more over here than over here. But we're going to get through it. Amen. Praise God. Put the anointings on this side. <laughs> the, the anointings on this side. <laughs> Ralph, you better move over. I know a place where we can go.
Praise God. Okay. Thank you. This is a song that meant something to somebody. <laughs> it got her through a lot with Richard. Praise God. With Richard. <laughs> it, it wasn't supposed to sound, you know, you know what I mean. <laughs> Just because of his love. Amen. No fear. Right, Ralph? Praise God. Love. 
God, just having the opportunity to be up here is just a blessing. Praise God. Pastor Frank.
guys sounded great. Woo. Boy, I, I don't know what to say. You guys sounded great. I, I do have a couple of things I'd like to mention. Uh, tomorrow is my best friend's 50th anniversary, Ralph and Helen Cook. 50 years! Woo! Praise God! And you should just see the love between them. Every time Amen. they talk, Woo. I love you, baby. Amen. Oh, Amen. it's just Amen. like, Amen. oh, it's so awesome. Praise and, God. And tomorrow, and tomorrow is, is Pastor Pastor's Frank's birthday. birthday. Woo. Woo. Praise God. <laughs> You're pretty good for 45. Praise God. Yeah. Just add 30 to that. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. <laughs> I added one more. <laughs> There's something I've learned over the years is this. When it comes to praise and worship, it drives out depression. It drives out fear. Because your mind is being renewed. Amen. So we're going to sing this song one more time. Let it come from here. And let it come out, okay? Amen. Let's, let, let, let's sing it one more time. There's people, out, there's people out there, they need to hear this song over again. Like you mean it. Fear you lost your hold on me. Well, I'm gonna sing in the middle of a storm. Louder and louder, you're here, my praises roar up from the ashes. Hope will arise. Death is defeated. Oh, 
still a little louder than this side. <laughs> Some of the people may not understand, but the anointing of God's on this side. <laughs> In this time, <clears throat> and all the crisis that's going to run our country, I'm finding out that the, the more I study, I find out that the devil's weapon is to deceive you and to bring fear and hopelessness your way. You're going to have to stand on the Word of God. You're going to have to stand. You're going to have to jump. You're going to have to do something and just say, you know what? I don't care what you throw at me, devil. I have eternal life in Christ Jesus. If anything was to happen to me, I would just come out of my body like a hand coming out of the glove, and I'll be in the presence of my Lord. If not, and I'm strong and I'm steadfast, man, I'm going to enjoy my time here on earth. Amen? Amen. Amen? Amen. Oh, who's the determining factor? Who's the main subject? You. You're going to have to get in there. Amen? Amen. Praise God. God's a good God, right? Amen. Amen. God is love. You can trust my God. Amen? Amen. Praise God. You may be seated. morning, church. I'm going to make announcements really short <coughs> today. So you all know what today is. It's Dinner Sunday. You know our Sunday school's at 9. Our Bible study's at 6 p.m. on Tuesday. Prayer's at 6 p.m. on Wednesday. Ladies meet at 11 o'clock. Our communion and missions offering is the first Sunday of the month, and we support Dennis and Jeannie in the jungles of Panama. So lift them up in prayer. And like I said before, if you didn't bring anything, please stay. We have a plethora of things back there. We got food up the yin yang. <laughs> we do. <laughs> it's just tons of food, so please stay with us. Um, men and women's meeting is coming up in a week or so. Not next week, but the following week, right? One of May. So wh that's when we'll be meeting. And the men meet at 8. They have their breakfast, and they have their meeting at 8.30. Then the ladies come in at 10, and they have their meeting. So please join us. Um, our daily reading, we encourage you all to read the Word of God daily because it's, you know, like that song we sang, in the middle of the storm. And guess what? Sometimes we're in a storm. Sometimes I feel like we're in a storm, and you don't know which way to turn or which way to go, but in the middle of the storm, make your praises known. Make your praises loud because that's what covers it. When we put our minds and our thoughts on the Lord, things kind of just seem to fade away. You know, the, the enemies out there, they steal, kill, and destroy. And guess who he wants to kill? You all. He, he wants to steal the word from you. Because if he can steal the word, you won't have anything to stand on. You'll just be like a person out there with no, no weapons That's right. on you. You That's won't right. have the armor of God. And the weapon is the Word. The, that's the only weapon of offense. 
the sword. And the sword is the word. Stab him with it. Poke him at it. Poke him. Poke him with the word. <laughs> That's what you need to do because, because, just because. The Walk for Life is coming May 20th in Lahana. The Walk for Life and the 5K Run registration is at 5.30 for the 5K Run and 6.30 for the Walk for Life. If you'd like to be a part of this great walk, please call the Ark Valley Pregnancy Center for more information or let Natalie know and she'll let you know what you can do. But we support them all every year. The, the speaker, <coughs> I did, we, we did some investigating. <coughs> and what's the speaker's name? <coughs> do you have it up there? <coughs> okay, Joseph Zeke. Joseph Z. He's hooked up with uh, Andrew Walmack. I, I, I did some investigating. <coughs> I asked a lot of questions. He's a good man. He's a good man. And uh, he's going to be in Swink. Now, we did some investigating, found out where the, uh, where the branch is at. If you're going to, uh, if you're going to Swink, Make a right-hand turn. I mean, make a left-hand. If you're going from Rocky Ford to Swing, make a left-hand turn at the tracks. Right across the street is a conical station or whatever it is. I make a quick left and then a quick right about a block down. It's just right there. You'll see a building, a steel building. It's white with a red roof. And it has a cross on it. She'll be there April the 30th at 6.30. I, I, I would encourage you to go. He's hooked up with uh, Andy Walmack. I believe he's spoken in some of his meetings. But when the first time someone threw that at me, I just don't tell people, just go. I like to do invest some investigating on him and, and, and look at his credentials. Praise God. And then <coughs> in May, <coughs> I think it's in May, the pastor from uh, Terra Church, Terra Christian Church in Springs, which was the church for uh, Andrew Walmack before he moved to Woodland Park, that pastor is going to be in in Swink at the branch. I'm, I'm going to ask you, I, I'm going to tell you this, don't miss him. Don't miss him. I don't know what day in May, but we'll find out. Okay? So April the 30th, Minister Zeke, Z, is going to be in Swink, April the 30th. I encourage you to go. I, I will tell you this. I, I don't fight over this pulpit. I don't. If someone can speak better than I can or get the message across better, why not go visit him? Go, go see this individual, especially that pastor from uh, Keras Christian, May 13th. Put that on your notes. May 13th, he's going to be in Swink. You need to go. You need to go. He is fantastic. He's wild. He's worse than I am a hundred times. He, uh, he's good. And that's all I can say. He's good. I encourage you to go. In, in fact, I would almost command you to go. You need to go. Make, make uh, adjustments April the 30th and May the 13th. Don't make excuses. Go. Amen. Now, Children's Church, uh, I don't know if they provide for children or not. That wasn't given to us 
but show up anyhow. Amen? Praise God. Let's take our tithes and offerings for today. If you need a, a tithe envelope, one of my ushers will, uh, uh, will give you an envelope. Amen. Amen. Write out checks out to Family Worship Center. <clears throat> if you want to give to Children's Church or the youth or to the building fund, uh, we want to change the floor in the in the kitchen. It's kind of wearing down. And we'd like to uh, paint the church on the outside. I'd like to make an announcement about the children's, uh, the youth and the children. We need teachers back there. But we don't only need teachers that are going to do it once in a while. We need a committed person to help out Kelly and the kids. At least two that will help because there's a lot of kids back there of different ages. And a lot of times you're teaching to a 10-year-old and a little 4- or 5-year-old, what? Say what? They don't understand. So we need somebody to volunteer to help on a kind of a regular basis if you might, if you'd like to do that, please. So be praying and ask the Lord what he has in, in mind for you. Maybe you're the one that should step up and do it, you know, but just ask God how you can be used. And I believe we have the material. We have the material. We have the lessons already. All you have to do is uh, study it and uh, be prepared. Uh, ask the Spirit of God for some witty ideas. But we all can't be in the church service. I know you want to be in the church service, and you don't want to go out and help the little ones. But I'll tell you what, the little ones need a lot of help. Amen. Then you can watch it on online. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Well, let's, let's hold up our tithe. Father, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for the tithe, Father God, and the offerings that come into this church. I thank you, Father God, for Malachi 3.10. And, Father God, I give you praise and glory and honor. And, Father God, I just thank you that the people give and give out of a <coughs> willing heart, Father God. It's a spiritual law and it works. Seed time and harvest. And, Father God, and I thank you for that. And in Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said what? Amen. Amen. You're blessed. Amen. Go ahead and minister to us. <coughs> I want Sandy to come up here. <coughs> give me your next slide. She's, she's going to give a, a, a testimony of what happened to her. Amen. Uh, I call her the miracle lady. It's nice to have her in our congregation. This is Sandy. Amen. Good morning, everyone. I, I struggled with this. Um, as you know, I did have a major heart attack. So I was taken in a body, but my mind was at peace. My husband is the one that was there, so I am relating all of this information via through him. The night that I had my heart attack, Dan had not been home for five days. He had been out working cattle. So that in itself is a miracle because he was there. I went to bed early, which is not the norm because I'm really a night owl. And when Dan came to bed, he said I was on my last breath. And he immediately called 911. At that point, uh, Nick Knapp was on his way to a field to plow it or something, and he was there in three minutes. And shortly after that, his brother Nick Knapp came, I'm sure with the ambulance, and they worked on me. And I believe that that was the time that I was gone for about 12 minutes. I was then taken to a hospital in La Junta where a flight for life came to get me. And at that time, there was a nurse that I soon got off of the helicopter. And she told Dan, I'm going to take your number, and I will call you if anything transpires on the trip to Pueblo. So I made it to Pueblo just fine. <laughs> and I'm not sure whether the nurse called him or when he got there, the nurse said, they have already put a stent in her heart. She's in recovery. And she's alive. So 
the nurse was there, the one they gave, took Dan's phone number, and I'm not sure how I communicated because I was intubated at the time, but I must have come to enough, and Dan was standing over me, and I, I motioned to him or I spoke to him and said, she is my angel. The nurse was standing there. She's my angel. Dan turned around to thank her, and she was gone. He's tried to call that number several times and never got an answer. So the miracles that transpired, God put so many people in the right place at the right time, and I was the recipient of that. You know, I was in the hospital for almost three months. I do not remember anything that transpired, but my husband was there every day. And I, he was like my bodyguard. He made sure <laughs> the nurses did what they were supposed to do, and they treated me with dignity, and, and that was a true blessing. Thank you, Dan. I have to tell you the thing that I remember, the first thing that I remember, is being able to go over to rehab and they had told me that I would be there for at least three weeks. And, and I was very thankful, you know. I mean, I had woke up from a great nap. <laughs> I felt like I was kind of energized, but they wouldn't let me do what I wanted. <laughs> so during that week, I went through a lot of testing to see if my mind and my um, physical abilities were okay. And at the end of a week, I got to go home. That is another blessing from God. And I have been remiss not sharing all of this because I wasn't sure what part was mine to tell and what part was Dan's. <laughs> because as I said, I was there in body, but my mind was at peace. And I know that God gave me that peace. Because Dan had said, the nurses said, I don't know how she does that. She is just so willing and calm, and and she she did everything necessary, you know, to get well. And I know that that was the time where God and the doctors and nurses healed my body. So I have just been remiss at sharing all of the details with you guys, and I wanted you to know just how good our God is. I had no idea how special we all are, but what God did for me is a miracle because I, I often think I'm not worthy. I'm not the disciple I should be. I'm not a strong person. I haven't told everybody the good news and how good God, our God is. So I wanted to share that with you today, and I thank you for listening. I want to share one thing that happened while she was in the hospital. We went through about three weeks of this, and I was really questioning God, questioning God why. And I went home to do laundry and lay down for a little bit, and if I could start our new washer, and there's no book with it, I couldn't <laughs> even figure out where to put the oh, yeah, it's in the book. <laughs> detergent in. And when I got frustrated and finally threw it in the door and shut the door and started it and went towards the bedroom to lay down, my Bible was laying open on the table. And a still small voice, if you want to call that, said, if you want to know what's going on, you probably ought to read the instruction book to life. And it was open to Isaiah 55, where it says, my ways are higher than your ways. My thoughts are higher than your thoughts. Trust me, and I'll make it right. And he did. Walking miracle.
When I was at Rama Bible Training Center, Brother Higgins taught us a lot about the spirit, soul, and body. He taught us a lot about the spirit. And the Bible says <clears throat> that we're spirit, soul, and body. We have a spirit. We have a soul, which is our mind. And this is our body. <clears throat> In other words, this is like an earth suit. We're only here temporarily. And in studying <clears throat> and trying to remember things that Brother Hagin taught us about the spiritual realm, when you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, His Spirit comes into you. Your old spirit moves. Now, I want to tell you something that I just <clears throat> I just learned this just recently. In fact, I, I just learned this a few, not too many hours ago. Your spirit sustains you because it's the spirit of God. It, that spirit is the same image of Jesus. The same spirit that went to hell and picked up and rose Jesus Christ from the dead, when you become a born-again child of the living God, He dwells in you. You can't be more righteous you're righteous, you're sanctified, you're just. Now I'm going to tell you something about my Lord. If I have that spirit of righteousness in me, then I have no shame, no guilt, no condemnation. I have no wrongdoing because they've been forgiven. But that spirit inside of her kept her alive. When I was studying and I was reviewing, this is just not many hours ago, I thought about you. That same spirit that rose Jesus Christ from the dead, it's only functioning the way that he was created to do. It's to keep you alive until you either die or, or Jesus comes. It wasn't her time. Twelve minutes is a long time. Twelve minutes is a long time. Three minutes is a long time. When I was studying, the Spirit of God really ministered to me on this about your spirit, man. Your spirit, man, is so alive in you because Jesus is alive in you. Don't you ever bow your head down to anyone. You have no guilt, no shame, no condemnation. You are righteous in Him which sustains you to be alive. It's not you walking 10 hours a day. It's not you walking 20 miles a day. It's not you eating the right foods, and I have nothing against that. You can do it if you want to. But this is what I say. With a long life, will I satisfy you, Frank? With a long life, I will satisfy Sandy. I'm only backing it up with Scripture, and I know some of you may say, I don't quite understand. Just believe what the Word of God says. The understanding will catch up to you. Just don't throw it and toss it away just like a bath water and just you know, throw it all away. Don't do that. Your spirit, man, is the same image of Jesus Christ in you as a born-again child of the living God. I don't know why I'm saying this. You never have to bow your head down to no one. The only individual you bow your head to is to the Lord Jesus Christ. 
Don't let anyone or any circumstances condemn you or put guilt in you. I've been forgiven. And I'm going to tell you something right now. Somebody needs to hear this. It doesn't matter what you did in the past. When I accepted or when you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, that same spirit came into you, took the old Frank out, and God resides in me. Now, with some Christians, you can't tell whether they're Christians or not because the, your mind has to be renewed. I'm not saying they're not born again. Uh, you know, I, could, I guess I could say that, but I will say this. They don't act and walk like Jesus walked. Amen? I hope you get that across. I went, it's just been hours, Sandy. It's just been hours I was going over those notes. That the life of God is in his spirit. Yes, and that's what keeps you alive. Yes. See, in most Christians, in most churches like the Baptist, Methodist, Presbyterian, they don't teach that. You know why? Because they don't understand it because they don't believe in it. I do. If the word of God says that the spirit of God dwells in me, the image of him dwells in me when I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, He's the one who sustains me. He's the one that holds me up together. And it doesn't matter what I go through. He's going to sustain me. You know, Sandy mentioned something. She said, you don't realize how important you are to the Lord. How, what was the word you used, Sandy? How, huh? Yeah, how deserving and how important you are to the Lord. My brother Gene told me this, oh, maybe a year ago. He said, when you realize how much God loves you, it'll change your life. It'll change your life. Like that song says, nothing you can ever do will make him love you more. Nothing you can ever not do will make him love you more. He's just love and he loves us so much and he loved her so much that he gave her life. He sustained, the Spirit of God sustained her. Sandy, if, if I'm correct, did I give you my book on healing? I have a book, a, a manual, by Brother Keith Moore. He's a, he's, he was a, he's a Rhema grad. Um, well, he, he was one of my Rhema teachers. And he, his manual is entitled God's Will to Heal. And there's 101 scriptures. And I gave it to her, and she was studying it. Now, I'm going to tell you something about the spiritual realm. The spiritual realm is real. When you feed it, you feed the Word of God into your spirit, man. One of these days, you're going to need it. See, whether you believe her or not, it don't bother me one bit, you know. But when you've been dead for 12 minutes and you wake up and all of a sudden you're not going to hear what's going around, but you know you're breathing, no one can take that away from you. Amen? Praise God. Excellent testimony. All the glory and all the honor goes to him. Not me, not this church. It's all him. It's all about him. He's, he's my healer. I'm not, I'm not your healer. I'm not your deliverer. I'm not the one that sustains you. I'm not the one, you know. I'm just a country preacher teaching what God tells me to preach or what I hear that's good. Amen? Someone told me one time, you talk like Kenneth Copeland. I said, well, guess what? He studies Brother, Cop uh, Br Brother Hagen. One, somebody said, you talk like Jerry Savelle. Guess what Jerry Savelle did? He learned from Brother Hagen. How, how about uh, Mark Hankins? How come he talks so much about this, this, and that? When we all come from the same seed, yeah. the same teacher, we all talk the same. We should. We should. Yes, sir. Amen. 
people. And guess what? None of us deserve it. <laughs> Some of you are rascals in the world. <coughs> and that's a yes, loose will. word. Yes, I will. <coughs> Some, Some of you, like Gene. Gene was something else when he was in the world before he accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. He was wicked. Guilty. <laughs> Guilty. Now he's a born-again child of the living God. Sins all forgiven. His name's written in the Lamb's book of life. And if anything happens to him, guess what? Yes. He's in the presence of my Lord. Yes. White covered by the blood of the Lamb. Yes. Coming back on a white horse with Jesus. Ah, that's another thing I've been studying. Not only white socks. <laughs> white robe. White horse. White robe. And, and the people from Family Worship Center. White wow, socks. You can tell, you can tell <laughs> the difference. Amen. Amen. We could teach on this uh, for hours. Amen. Praise God. Good testimony. Let's dismiss for Children's Church. Thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 How can you teach? <laughs> How can you teach? I want you to pray about this to help out with Children's Church. I want you to pray about this. I want you to pray about it. We need help. You know, there's some other churches that actually hire people to play the piano and lead praise and worship. They pay them. They don't even go to the church. I don't want to do that. You guys have been taught good, and uh, <clears throat> you know what it is to be led by the Spirit of God. Amen? God's a good God. Amen? <clears throat> a lot that what's been said is uh, in my sermon, and a lot that was said in Sunday school is in my sermon. Praise God. God's a good God, isn't he? He's good. I want you to turn to Ephesians 4.22. We're going to be talking about give no place for the devil. And one way to have this protective armor on us <coughs> is to put on the armor of God. And we are to walk like he walked and talk like he talks. Amen? Speak like he speaks. Why can't we? You can, because the, the image of God is a spirit, and his spirit is inside of us. Each one of you have the spirit of God in you. The same spirit that rose Jesus Christ from the dead. If you're a born-again Christian, you accept Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, he lives in you. Your spirit man will tell you the difference whether it's God or the devil. And the only way you're going to do uh, figure that out, well, you can't figure it out. You have to get into the Word of God. Two hours a week isn't going to do it. You're going to have to read your chapter. You're going to have to read 1 Corinthians 13. And then when you have time, get in there and start a study. There's, there's almost three studies going in my spirit right now. This one here, spirit, soul, and body. And I forgot the other one. It just slipped my mind. No, that's what I'm teaching on today. You have to get it into your spirit that you are somebody in Christ Jesus. Amen? Amen? You don't have to go around asking other people what they think about whatever your calling is on your life. You don't have to do that. It's in you. 
you have to you have to train yourself that you're going to speak out the words that are, uh, that are in there. He'll lead and he'll guide you. Okay? I really don't ask, I, I really don't, you can ask Stella, I, I don't ask people what they think about my sermons after I teach. I don't. I don't. My wife comes up to me, she says, oh, your sermon was okay. There's other times I come home and she, she just, just keeps on talking all afternoon. I said, man, what you had to say was good. That was good, that was good, that was good, that was good. I'm going to tell you something right now. The Spirit of God in you is going to lead you and guide you in every circumstances. Amen. Say this, the Spirit of God, Spirit of God will, lead and guide me will lead and guide me in everything of my life. If you believe that, you don't have to go around asking other people what they think. Do I ever call you up and ask you what, I, what you think of what I said? No. Not, I, not, not, now, don't get me wrong. I do talk to other people sometimes, and I do ask them, what's your thought on this? And if I'm correct, it should match what they're saying if they're correct, that it comes from the Word of God. It should match the Word of God. If you're having marital problems, ask God. But if you're having marital problems, I'm going to tell you something right now. When, by, by the Spirit of God, He's not going to correct the other individual. He's, the Spirit of God is going to do what? You better believe it. Because sometimes we get so religious, we think the other people are wrong. It could be you. Put the heater up. It's cold in here. Amen? Is God a good God? Okay. Now, I want you to start in Ephesians, the fourth chapter, verse 22. And I'm just going to summarize this. Verse 22 says, that you put off concerning the former conversation, the old man. So when you get born, don't talk like you used to talk. Mm -hmm. Have you talked to Christians and they still cuss? Yeah. Have you talked to Christians and they still hit the bottle? Yes. You know, they still mistreat, mistreat their wives, mistreat their workers or whatever. Mm -hmm. Now, what I'm, saying, what I'm saying is this. I'm not saying if they accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, Sometimes I have a habit of saying this because I've heard it before. I question their salvation. I like to put it this way sometimes. Are they walk? How come they're not walking like Jesus? Because if you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, the old nature is gone, the new nature comes in. So the new nature, the Spirit of God is going to help you renew your mind. Romans 12, 2. If you don't get in the word of God, your mind will never get renewed, and then you're going to be walking like the world, even as a born-again child of the living God, but you're not walking like him, and you're not talking like Jesus. I know my wife talks to me about this. Sometimes she disagrees with me, but I told her this last time I talked to her about this. Don't make excuses for other people. She slowed down. If Jim was acting like the world, if, if he's acting like the world, but he accepts Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, I will say this, how come you're not walking and talking like Jesus? Who set the example? Jesus did. Jesus said, follow me, mimic me, copy me, do the things that I did. So when you get saved, the first thing you got to do is put that former stuff away and you got to get in the Word of God to renew it because you, your spirit man's not going to change. This did not get born again. And I don't care how smart you think you are, your intellect, I don't care how many books you've read with a, with a cross on it and, and with a, a dove on it <coughs> and a fish. A lot of these books are not Christian books. You got to be very careful. 
get some good books and some good, well-known ministers. And verse 23 uh, uh, says, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. So what's going to hold you back from walking victorious is your mind has to be renewed by the Spirit of God. Sometimes you can talk to somebody, you, you can try to encourage them and everything, but if they're not willing to change, a lot of times you just blow a lot of hot air towards their way because they're not going to receive it. The Bible says we have to be led by the Spirit of God. Yeah, but I gave them the word. So did Jesus. And thousands left his meetings. So who are you? You greater than Jesus? No, you're not. In verse 24, it says, put on the new man. Put off the old man, put on the new man. Who has to do that? You do. You do. Uh, verse 25. It, it's, in, it's interesting, of all the sins there is in, in, in the world, verse 25 says, Wherefore, putting away lying. Lying gets your buddy into trouble. Don't lie. Don't make up stories. Don't go tell me you heard God. Don't tell me when you didn't. I, I've heard, I, I went to a, uh, a prayer meeting one time up in Loveland. And, and, and bless the church, bless everything. They had about 50 people praying and everything. And one lady was praying and she just gets up and she starts just shaking. She says, I felt my angel. I felt his wings go across my back, my back when he turned around. And, and I'm looking, and like I say, I, I'm not judging it, but the word of God's more important than anything else. Sometimes you get into prayer, you get into singing, you get into, you get into the spirit, and, and, and then all of a sudden, you get all excited, and, and you feel as, oh, God, God was standing in front of me. Jesus was standing next to me, you know. I, I'm not going to deny it. But the word says that the word of God is more important. In, in fact, Jesus said this. He said, I put the word above my name. He magnifies his word above his name. I, I, now, 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 don't get me wrong. I, I, if it happens to me, praise God. But th there's things sometimes you just keep it to yourself. And you go, wow. I can't even imagine what happened to Sandy. That nurse gives Dan a telephone number, call me. And all of a sudden, she's gone. I come out of surgery, and there's a, a red-headed nurse sitting next to me with a little cap on, blonde hair, blue eyes, red lipstick, a tag, sit next to me when I came out of surgery. And I woke up the next day, she's gone, but, you know, I thought they switched nurses. Shifts. Shifts. But when I went to go check out, I says, tell that nurse, that red-headed nurse, with the, I mean, my, my fault, I should, it wasn't blonde, it was a red-headed nurse, blue eyes and red lipstick, and had a tag, she had all, she had her uniform on. And they looked at me kind of funny. I said, did I say anything wrong? Because the spiritual realm is real. Yeah. Yeah. That angel is real. Thank God that he opened our eyes to see it. And I told those people, what happened to that uh, red-headed, uh, uh, blue-eyed, red-lipstick uh, nurse? And they looked at each other, and they kind of looked at each other, and then I, I, I said, did I say anything wrong? She, uh, <clears throat> the, the lady came up to me and she says, I've been here 20-some odd years or whatever. We've never had a red-headed nurse. <laughs> oh my God. The spiritual realm is real. Yes, it is. Yeah. When he says, put off the old nature, quit lying, because all you're doing is hurting yourself. Your mind is going to act like the world. Your mind's not going to act like you have the armor of God on. I know people come up to me and they go, well, I felt this and I felt that and I felt this. And I just look at them and go, okay. 
I'm going to tell you something right now. The spiritual realm is real. There are angels out there. If Jesus shows up, some people have been talking about, well, I saw this and I felt this and I did that. If Jesus ever showed up in their bedroom, right. they'll, they'll make another door. <laughs> they'll, they'll, they'll run right through that wall. Exactly. Praise God. Yeah. Thank God. Let's go to the next verse. just to uh, Verse 26. Be ye angry and sin not. Anger will stop you from getting the best of what God has for you. Yeah. Anger and lying. Verse 27, neither give place to the devil. How do you give place to the devil? Lying in anger. You know what gets place to the devil? Depression. Feeling, uh, there's no such thing as unworthy. Some churches say, well, we're just so unworthy. Uh, no, I'm not. I used to be unworthy. Now what? I'm a child of the living God. Three or four thousand promises. I'm covered by the blood of the Lamb. I'm coming back in a white robe on a white horse. I'm, I'm coming back with Jesus. And, and they say, I'm not I'm, I'm unworthy. No, you're not. You may feel like it at the moment, but when you lay your eyes on Jesus, it's all gone. Amen? Is God a good God? Amen. Look at verse 28. Let him that stole steal no more. Don't let the devil steal anything from you. Don't let him steal your joy, your comfort, your peace. Don't let him. Who's the main subject? You. We have authority in the name of Jesus. Go to Ephesians 6.10. No, Colossians 2.15. Go to Colossians 2.15. Colossians 2.15. I'm going to tell you what, what Jesus Christ did at the cross. Let me tell you what Jesus Christ did at the cross. If you can understand this, you can understand how the devil tried to steal Sandy's life away. I don't know what, I don't know what God has for Sandy and, and, and Dan. I, I have no idea. But it has to be good. It has to be good because when, when, when he knows that there's a calling on your life, he's going to come at you with everything that he has. He's going to come against you with all the artillery. Right. He's going to come in like dressed like Pancho Villa. You know Pancho Villa in the old days when they were fighting over there in Mexico? They, they had those two straps with bullets this long. <laughs> the rifle, you stuck one thing in there. <laughs> and then they had cannons. And Colossians 2.15 says, And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphantly <clears throat> over them in it. So when Jesus Christ died on the cross, he whipped the devil. Because Adam gave the authority to the devil in the Garden of Eden. Jesus came back and had to be the second Adam he had to be that perfect lamb on the Passover, and he died for us. So that, now listen to this, listen to this. If he triumphed over the devil, and he got the keys back, there's no way I can feel depressed. How can you? How can you? How can you? How can you sit there and go, I feel depressed today? Then you're not a born-again child of the living God. You know, I hate to be that bold, but my God, something, you're not being taught right. Remember what I said, I'm not moved by what I see, hear, or feel. I learned that from Brother Hagen. First time I heard that back in 1983, I thought he was crazy. Because, see, I was thinking like the world. Everybody takes an aspirin. Everybody has to take a... a some kind of medication in their life. You know, you get older, your bones itch a little bit more, they hurt a little bit more, they crack a little bit more, and if you work and sit down and you get up, and you go, hi, 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 hi. 
But guess what? Guess what I say though? I'm healthy, and I'm strong, and I'm prosperous. So what's happening to my spirit, man? My spirit, man, is getting fed the word of God. And if Jesus defeated the devil, you know what show means? S-H-O-W? Guess what the Roman soldiers did to the, to the enemy when they defeated them? This is, this is history. They got the king, tied him up, and they, they walked him, they dragged him parade. through the, fr they had a parade for him. Uh, how about the parade we have down here yeah. for, this, uh, for the fair? Remember the, the parade we used to have? Uh, we didn't have it last year, but <coughs> I mean, uh, thousands of people show up. Oh, the, we're, we're having a parade, and you get to see all that. Well, the Roman soldiers would come in, <coughs> the commanding officers and everything, and parade him in, drag him in. And then in front of the people, they will stand him up and cut his thumbs off. And then in front of the people, they will cut his toes off. So why the thumbs? He can't hold a sword. Why the toes? He can't run. So he's never a, th a threat to the Roman government. Jesus did that to the devil. And he kicked him. Remember on the third day? You know, people are asking, uh, the demons are asking, how's Jesus? Oh, he's, the, he's, he's cold as ice. He's a dead man. And he walks over there, and all of a sudden, he sees a little light, gets a little bit closer, gets bigger and bigger and bigger, and finally the prison door goes, boom. Jesus walks out, kicks him, grabs the keys of the kingdom, comes up, and gives it to us. Yeah. By my stripes you're healed, with a long life will I satisfy you. That's 120 years. Get that into your spirit, man. Get that into your spirit, man, that he's defeated. Now, the only power the devil has is what you encourage him and what you give him because of your mouth. The only power he has is to lie, change the word around, deception. He has no power. He can't kill you. He can't force you to do anything unless you speak it out and you let him. Flip Wilson would come out down the stairs, the devil made me do it. No, he didn't. But millions and millions, billions of people like that show. I liked it, but I didn't understand it. I thought he was just joking around. That, would empower, that empowers the devil. When you say, I'm broke. The devil just told me something came to my mind. I'm not worth it. I'll never make it. Your spirit, man, inside ought to tell you that's a lie from hell. Do you understand what I'm saying? That's a lie from hell. But if he already defeated him, you know what spoil is? You know what spoil means? Everything that he meant to harm you with is gone. It's not going to work. You ought to, you guys, you guys ought to be shouting and running around this church. You know, people ask me about this COVID-19. I says, what? What do you think about this COVID-19, this, uh, the vaccine? We were at Walmart the other day. They got this room right there. Go in there, get your free shot. Now, if you want to, you go ahead and do it. I don't have nothing against it. If you already took two shots, ten shots, I, it don't matter to me. I like to be like the children of Israel when they were in the land of Goshen. Remember when the ten plagues came in? The flies, the frogs. All that stuff that all that stuff that came upon the Egyptians, they lost the the water turned to blood. When that curse tried to come towards the land of Goshen, there was a force field. There was a force field. 
So when the curse hit, boom, it bounced right back. The children of Israel had sun, water. They didn't. They had darkness. So what do I think about COVID-19? When he gets near me, boom. I'm going to get a, a little bit ahead of myself because I'm going to be talking about the shield of faith. Now, the shield in the Roman days covered the whole man. It wasn't this little round little thing. What good is it going to do when you're fighting against somebody who has a 10-foot sword and you got a little... Amen. It covers the whole man. Now, the only time he's going to get hurt is when he does this. <laughs> Give me a box. I hope you're getting this because I'm going to blow you away. Go to Ephesians. It's just a few pages over to your left. Verse 10 says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Verse 11, Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles or the trickery of the devil. I talked about him enough. For we rest not against flesh and blood. Remember, you're not fighting against your mother-in-law or father-in-law. No. You're not fighting against the police officers. You're not fighting against the teachers. You're not fighting against anyone else. You're not fighting against your husband and your wife. Okay? Because it, it says right there in the Bible, we don't fight against flesh and blood. We fight against other people that throw things at us because the devil's using them to come against us. And like I say, those words hurt. They penetrate. By golly, somebody gets over there and says, you're all tall, dark, you're tall, dark and, and, and skinny and ugly. Uh, nobody will want to marry you. And, and if you've been told that since you were 13 years old and you, now you're 40, what do you do when you run into somebody? Yeah. <laughs> My Bible says to stand up and look up. Your Redeemer comes from, from the high places. It doesn't come from here. I look up and I go, mm. Thank you, Amen? Yes. Okay, now in verse 13, Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand or go against in the evil day and having done all it is what? When the devil comes in and he comes at you 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 and says, Gene, you're worthless. Jackie, you'll never make it through Bible school. He comes across, comes across, comes and just because you're rebuking me, he goes away, but he'll come back again. Just because you think you're so religious, you'll say, I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. You better rebuke him a hundred more times because he's going to come, he's going to come, he's going to come. Why? Because he's persistent. Yes, he then you have to be steadfast in the word of God. Pick up your shield and say, guess what? Guess what's protecting me? When the, when the devil tells you, you won't live past, to, past 80 years old. Okay, tomorrow I'll be 74. The Bible says I can have a long life up to 120 years old. Guess what I'm shooting for? And my wife came up to me. She said, if something happened and you die early, I'm going with you. <laughs> Kenneth Copeland's a little bit older than Gloria Copeland, so when he reaches 120, she's about three, four years short. She's five years shy of 120. She says, when you go, I go. I go. <laughs> Amen? Yes. Praise God. 14, stand therefore having your loins girt with about truth. Remember I talked, to, I talked about the belt of truth. The belt of truth. Mm -hmm. It holds the whole armor of God. Remember, don't get hooked up on the armor. It's the only an illustration. Get hooked up on righteousness. Yes. Truth. If you have the truth and you're righteous before God, you are righteous before God. You can't get any more righteous. 
if you had been a sinner for 22 years and you got saved today, you're righteous just as I, as I am, as, as righteous as Kenneth Copeland and somebody who's, who's been in the ministry 50 years. The only difference is that the gentleman that's been uh, <coughs> preaching for 50 years knows a little bit more than he does, but he'll catch up. Amen? Mm -hmm. Now, verse 15, to have your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, be ready to go. Somebody asks you a question, be ready to give an answer. Nobody in this church, if you've been coming to this church for any amount of time, somebody says, how do you get saved? Well, let's take it to the pastor. I might throw you and that guy out. Not in a bad way. All I'm going to say, you lead him to the Lord because you've been taught better than that. If someone is sick, don't bring them to the pastor. You pray. You know what the biggest, the most effective prayer is? Is between a husband and a wife. And that's what happened in your guy's case. The best prayer is between a husband and a wife. That is solid. There's power in that. And I'm not saying you can't bring them over to our house. I'm not saying that. I'll pray for them and let them go, and then I'll call you in and go, what in the heck have you been listening to? You know why? You have to become a disciple just like Jesus Christ did. You laid hands on the sick and they'll recover. In healing, we... we we, we have healing school going on on Tuesday nights. I wish you guys could make it. The method that Jesus used most in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John was laying on their hands. Can I pray over somebody that's a thousand miles away from my house? Yes. You better believe I can. Will the word work? Yes, it will. Yes. Amen. Okay, now. Verse 16. Give me, about, give me about 15 minutes and I'll be done. Above all, taking the shield of faith. I like that word above all. What about the belt of truth? What about the breastplate of righteousness? I was talking to Stella about this. Sometimes you may be in a hurry. You got to go on a bike ride. You got cookies, brownies, you got your little water, uh, orange juice or whatever. And you forget your belt. You forget your breastplate of righteousness. Now watch this, watch this. God really showed me something on this. But if I have my shield of faith and I stand on it because that's what pleases God, my belt of truth and my breastplate, breastplate of righteousness will catch up to me. Yes. You ought to be saying hallelujah. <laughs> because some of you leave the house really fast and really quick. You didn't pray. You didn't read your chapter. You didn't read 1 Corinthians 13. And then when something happens, instead of going like this and going like this and going like that, you go, Lord, above all, above all the circumstances and all the situations, I'm going to stand behind this shield of faith. Because <laughs> faith is what's going to hold me together. Yes. You got it? Yes. Don't go looking like this because the devil has little darts. And then he has arrows. I wish the Spirit of God will open up our ears so we can hear when you throw an air, a, 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 a spear. And you can hear it when it hits your shield of faith. Then I wish God would open up our ears to hear when someone stretches out that string on the, on the bow and lets it go that we can hear the string. And then we can hear the arrow. And then we can hear this. Boom. 
because it hit my shield of faith. But if I go like this, and I look like this, and then you fall down, what happened? I don't have time. There are scriptures in the Bible that says evil people, wicked people, will throw words at you without even a conscience to knock you down and, and to belittle you. You can hear the voice, and then you can hear the words, but then I get behind my shield of faith, and I'm going, you know what, Father? I don't care what they say about me. I'm going to have my shield of faith. Because words hurt. Now watch this. Watch this, Stella. Remember God has a double-edged sword? That's real. He said he's going to get that sword, <laughs> go like that to the nations that don't follow him. They're against his people. It's real. People are going to fall dead. In the spiritual realms, can words hurt you? Yes, they can. Stick and stones may hurt my bones, but words will never harm me. That's a lie from hell. Because some of you, I believe this, words have been said over you. You need to forgive it, forgive those people, and you've got to go on with the program. I've talked to a lot of men that have been in a lot of situations, and I tell them this. You need to put your pants back on. You need to tighten your belt on. And you need to look in the mirror and say, I am somebody in Christ Jesus. It doesn't matter what's been told for me the last 30, 40, or 60, or 70 years. There's people that have left this church. Sure, it bothers me. But then I find out they don't believe in healing, they don't believe in prosperity, they don't believe in this, they don't believe in that. I didn't teach them that. I like to hear that in the spiritual realm. When he throws, when he goes like this, and you can hear that string, and then, and then, boom, and it just drops. We couldn't find my darts yesterday. I was going to put a board over here. Laugh all you want to. I was going to put a dart over here, a, a board over here, and I was going to get a dart. Line number one. <laughs> Line number two. <laughs> now, <clears throat> watch this. The Bible says this, that the word of God, <clears throat> I mean the... Uh, when these lies come at you and the words come at you, bad words, that it pierces your heart. If I have my shield on, how did that word that someone spoke bad about me hit my heart? What happened to your shield of faith? What happened to it? What happened to your shield of faith that protects you from all these words? But one gets through there and it pierces your heart and it damages your heart. How did it get through there? Not going to church? Listen to me. Not reading your chapter. Not praying. And not praying in the Holy Ghost. Your defense is what? Do you understand? And all of a sudden, you wake up one day and you go, well, how come everything's happening to me? How come bad things are happening to me? I listen to this minister and he says, Ask the Holy Ghost what you've been doing the last 48 hours. One hour of studying, one hour of prayer, and 15 minutes reading the Word. You think that's going to hold you up for the next 48 hours? I'm, I'm, not, I'm not being hard-nosed. 
But I can pray in the Holy Ghost all day long and nobody even knows that I'm praying. There's people that speak in tongues in the church service so loud that it disturbs you. Brother Hagin said, I pray in tongues 10, 12, 15 hours a day. I said, well, how can you? You got to do your studying. You got to do this. You got to eat. He says, I pray in the spirit. And, and you don't even know I'm praying in the spirit. Just because you pray in the spirit loud doesn't mean you get God's, God's attention. He doesn't care how, 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 how loud you pray. Sometimes just saying, Lord, I love you. Lord, I thank you that I'm the head, not the tail, above and not beneath. Thank you, Father God. I'm blessed going in. I'm blessed going out. Thank you, Father God. I'm healthy, I'm strong, and I'm prosperous. Do you understand that? It's you that has to do it. That's why it says there's some people that don't like you because you're outspoken. If I'm outspoken, listen to Andrew Womack. Boy, he's rough. He'll say, you're stupid, not me. He says, you're the dummy, not me. Now, if you're not used to that, you'll quit. I mean, well, who is he to call me a dummy? See, you're, you're already offended. If you're offended, my wife tells me, do you have a heart? Does it beat? Do you have any feelings? She tells me that. She looks, she don't tell me that anymore. When we first got married, she looked at me, she touched me, she go, let me see if you're breathing. I said, you want to cut me? Make sure that blood comes out red, not blue or orange. If you're going to be strong in the spirit of God, be steadfast in the spirit of God and don't give up because somebody doesn't like you. And quit picking around your... You know why people get offended and don't know their, their authority in the name of Jesus? Remember that parade of the Roman soldiers? Some of you weren't, weren't at the parade. You missed a parade. You know how you can miss a parade? Not getting into the word of God. I told her to stop. She starts laughing. She says, you're so true. It's so true. It is. We're going to see this in heaven. But we need to see it now because we don't need it in heaven. Amen? Amen. I have five pages of notes. <laughs> and I didn't even get done with the first page. Yes. To be continued. But if I'm going to have my shield of faith, then I can sing this song. It's a song. I don't know if you know it or not. I don't know if you guys know this song. I trust you, Lord. I trust you. I trust you, Lord. I do. I never even worry that I might not make it through. Because I trust you. I trust you. I trust you, Lord. I do. Because I know you love me. I will always trust you. If you can get that into your spirit, man. If you can get that, if you can get that into your spirit, man, that you trust the Lord regardless of what's going on. That bell of truth, that breastplate of righteousness, and that shield of faith will sustain you and keep you alive. This is good teaching. We were spirit, soul, and body. And all this word right now goes into your spirit because it has to be the same spirit that Jesus Christ, that rose Jesus Christ from the dead. And the Holy Spirit revealed it to Paul. And it's in us. The Spirit of God will reveal it back to us. If you, if you spend time studying. Amen.
God's a good God. Some of you may have a lot of questions and ask him, what do I do in this situation? What do I do? What do I do? What do I do? What do I do? Remember I told you I had 15 minutes? I still got three. (laughs) Don't give up on my God. Don't do it, people. Don't do it. Don't throw in the towel. Some of you are really thinking hard. But everything I've said is in the Word of God. Look at it. Get on YouTube. You can stop anytime you want. Copy down the scriptures. Look it up for yourself. Amen? Thank God this body, my, my spirit man, goes to heaven. My wife says I'm tall, dark, and handsome. That's what she tells me. Can you imagine how good I'm going to look in heaven? With my white robe? My white horse? You guys don't believe me, do you? Revelations 19. Revelations 19. Revelations 19. Richard, you might have to help me out. Revelations 19. Revelations 19. Revelations 19. Oh. Let's start with verse 11. Let's start with verse 11. And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True. And in righteousness he does judge and make war. His eyes were a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. He was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. Look at verse 16. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horse, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. Guess who that is? That's we us. That be us. Amen? Praise God. Uh, Can you see your husband all dressed in white? On a white horse with white socks on? And then he turns around and he says, you look pretty good. (laughs) We're covered by the blood of the Lamb. That's how we're walking around in heaven. No sickness, no sorrow, no heart attacks, no leukemia, no depression, no oppression, no anxiety attacks. Nothing. Nothing. But just praising God and learning more about my Lord Jesus Christ. Amen or oh me? Amen. Amen. I was, I was, Stella, Stella always wants to know, what are you going to be teaching on? I, say, I tell her, just show up. <laughs> and then she comes down to my computer and she goes, she looks at my notes. I says, you can't cheat. <laughs> and then she goes, i got a question to ask you about this and a question about that. I said, okay, I'll let you know what I know. And she goes, sometimes I agree with you. And sometimes I don't. I said, it don't bother me a bit. She goes, I know it doesn't. And then Kenneth Copeland that night talks on the same thing I talked about, and she goes, oh, I get it. <laughs> As a pastor, you've you got to get used to that. It doesn't bother me. Because the Word of God from any pastor that's teaching the right thing and, and teaching it correctly doesn't matter. Maybe they had a different word to use. I don't know. God's a good God. I want you to bow your heads. <coughs> Close your eyes.